All right, the new 2016 MacBook Pro is starting to get prepped for shipping to those who ordered online. I know in our house, we're going to be getting uh, the one with the touch bar. Uh, but joining us to talk about what it's like to tear apart the 13-inch MacBook Pro is Kyle Weens from iFixit. How's it going, Kyle? Awesome. Great to see you. Good to have you back, sir. Uh, so, Kyle, this is not the one with the touch bar. That's the one we're getting in our home. Sounds like you're going to have that coming somewhere down the I want the one. Yes. I, I, we just haven't been able to get our hands on one yet. Apple's not shipping them quite yet. Yeah, but you got your hands on the 13-inch with the function yes. keys. I do. Um, I have it here. In pieces. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, well, one of my questions was, did you put it back together and did it work? I'm assuming that uh, is no. Here it is. And no, we haven't we haven't got around to it yet. People always say, like, what what, what do you think about it? I don't know. I didn't turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> what, am I supposed to turn it on? What? Right. I know. You're, you're one of the only people that buys one of these things and never turns it on. Um, I mean, is this very different from MacBooks that you've uh, taken apart in the past? Oh, uh. <laughs> the, the trackpad wasn't screwed in. There we go. Uh no, uh, it, it, this is this is a hybrid between the MacBook technology and the the previous generation Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that it took them this long to come out with this product. It doesn't feel that revolutionary to me. Um, you've got not very much key travel on the keyboard, but I mean, you look inside. I mean, it's it's kind of a similar um, similar architecture inside. Uh, they, uh, I've got the battery here. Removing the battery is a major challenge on things, uh, on these things. You can see the amount of glue that we have to deal with yeah, when we're okay. prying this thing up. Um, so y you would think that, that with the amount of money that they had, they'd figure out how to make a way to make this thing easier to recycle, uh, but they didn't. Uh, so no, it feels, it feels like a, ha a marriage between the previous MacBook Pro and the new MacBook. Kind of like everybody expected us to get to get a new laptop out. Man, they keep asking us. Whatever, just take that one. Let's uh, let's pull some parts out, replace them with new ones, and put it out. And no one will know the difference except for I fix it, of course. <laughs> right, and there are some areas where. So I've got the fan here, uh, and they talk about the asymmetrics, yeah. so the distance between the blades and the fan. I'm sure there's an incredibly sophisticated algorithm behind it. Uh, it's it's a little bit hard to reverse engineer that algorithm by looking at. It. You can see it. It's a pretty thin Man, fan. It's crazy. It's yeah. cool. It's really cool, and it's and it's very thin. And I'm sure that you know, from a thermal management perspective, it's pretty dang slick. I don't know if Steve Jobs is spinning in his grave that there's still fans in Apple laptops. He doesn't like fans very much. Uh, <laughs> but here we are. This is a very very quiet fan. It's not doesn't need to move a lot of air. And I mean, Apple was bragging about their advanced thermal management techniques. I don't know. It, it's it's a fan that maybe is cool. This is actually surprisingly heavy. This is the heat sink from it. Uh, and and you you notice the kind of interesting rectangular shape to the heat sink. That's because on on the circuit board here you've got you have this guy here. Uh, so so they have several several different ICs kind of in one area, and then they're using the same heat sink across all of them to distribute to uh, to these heat coils, which the fan blows over the top of. So the, the MacBooks have a, a massive touchpad. Uh, can you tell from taking it apart? That's now in pieces. This is yeah, on the floor. That, that, that's oh, floor. Here it is. Uh, so uh, See, kind of compare to the size of my hand. Yeah, like yeah. It, I mean, it's the size of an iPhone, right? It's big. Yeah, let's let's look. I have my so here's my iPhone four. Uh, that is awesome. And uh, I here, love that you use an iPhone four. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Almost two yeah. times the size of an iPhone 4. Um, so yeah. could you tell uh, what they made, like what they got rid of because of the bigger touchpad or um, what changed because the touchpad was bigger? They didn't really need to, I mean, the touchpad sits on top and it's not necessarily very thick. So I would say if anything, it freed up a small amount or it, it took up some space in inside the, the case. Um, but I would say in general, no, they could have easily put a trackpad that larger on the other ones. It didn't really take up any additional space. You can you can see here, it's not it doesn't sit in recess very far. Yeah. Um, so there is a us. small amount of, of battery um, uh, uh, cost to taking that space, but it's not very much. I mean, they could have made the trackpad 50% bigger on this if they had wanted to. I think it's just a question of how big do you want the trackpad to be? It's already pretty dang big. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, what about hand across it? What about the SSD? Because I know, you know, when it comes to upgrading, um, you know, laptops and everything, storage obviously right. is, a, is a big consideration at some point. You know, the storage you have now might not be sufficient five years from now or four years from now. Uh, is that Absolutely. easy to replace? 
Well, and, and let's not, it's not just about that. It's about imagine that you have a problem like yesterday, yeah. uh, my MacBook actually died and I had another computer in the office and I was able to take the SSD out of mine, throw it in the other one and I was good to go in 10 minutes and now I'm gonna go and deal with fixing that thing. So having storage modular is really, really critical, not just for upgradability, but also just for basic troubleshooting. Um, uh, or uh, there's a lot of reasons you want storage to be modular. So this is the, this is the SSD. Um, it has a proprietary Apple uh, controller on it. And so we're not sure, which means that the, the controller chip, this is SanDisk Flash, but the controller chip is made by Apple. Remember they bought Anabit, that Israeli company a while back. Mm -hmm. So Apple's making the controller and the question would be, will it be possible for third parties to make a controller that's compatible with this thing? And this of course is a proprietary new port design that we haven't seen before. So it's gonna be kind of an expensive proposition for somebody to come out with one. I hope that they do, because we'd really like to see you know, a two terabyte SSD option in a year or two. So what about the screws? Are there any uh, new screws or are they the same as the old one? Yeah, they're not, they're not making life easy on us. Um, <laughs> Uh, there are always lots of uh, challenging screws. They've got pentalobe screws um, uh, on the bottom of it. Uh, I mean, pretty much, <laughs> I can go into the details on the screws. Just get our newest toolkit, and then you'll have everything you need. Uh, uh, it, I mean, there's a lot of different tool changes that you have to use to pull these things apart. Yeah, I think I saw in your write-up it was like five different types, you know, throughout yeah. or whatever. <clears throat> Don't know what. And you're that's part of why we gave it a low score. Like, yeah. come on, guys. I mean, how many different tools do I have to buy to take something apart? There isn't really a good technical reason for switching switching screw heads. They could very easily use as well, pick one and use that throughout the entire device. I mean, other than making sure, or at least making more sure that. Apple is who you use or who you go through in order to do any sort of modification or upgrades or anything like that, right? I mean, I guess that's an idea, but like I'm selling like a lot of screwdrivers. So I think it's really the iFixit Employment Act of 2016. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I was going to ask, yeah. I'll sell you a new screwdriver. Yeah, it's it's cool, going to be money. Cool. <laughs> Works yeah, for me. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, we sell a lot of screwdrivers to Apple. Like they can't take this stuff apart without my screwdrivers either. So I, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> um, so, okay, so you've kind of touched on it a little bit, but it sounds like repairability, which is kind of a, a big part of, of what these walkthroughs are all about, pretty low on this new laptop. Do you kind of expect that to be the case probably with the uh, one with the touch bar as well? I imagine it'll be similar. It may even be a little bit worse. We've heard some rumors of some challenging uh, uh, tools. So we gave this, we gave it a two out of 10. <laughs> um, and, and and this is really a concern. And we've seen this, you know, we rated the existing Retina MacBook Pros very low for repairability. And it's hurt a lot of people because you have a $2,000 computer and one tiny little thing breaks and it's a yeah. $1,500 $1, repair. Uh, we're going away from MagSafe on this thing. And so on the circuit board, these are the two USB-C ports. And they're kind of cantilevered out here and they feel pretty fragile to me. Like it's actually flexing as I'm as I'm pushing on it here. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine this thing will survive a very good impact where, I mean, I've tripped over cords all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, MagSafe has saved me so much. So I'm kind of concerned about this. I have no idea. I can't comprehend why the, the, the USB-C ports are soldered onto the board rather than being a separate component. That seems like a much more rational design, especially when you're really cognizant of that as you're, as you're removing the, the MagSafe port. Hmm. All so right. I, I just really don't, I mean, you, you have, like, clearly there are thousands of man hours of engineering into this thing. There's an incredible amount of care lavished into it. I mean, all of these little parts are so well designed to have something like that. It, 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 it's, um, it's kind of befuddling. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I will let you know how long it takes for us to accidentally kick the, uh, the port out of out of operation because yes, the mag the MagSafe has helped me uh, uh, and my wife out plenty of times, and to know that it's not on here kind of makes me a little afraid, a little afraid yes. of the fragility. But uh, look, keep it away from your children, children. Keep it away from your puppies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah.